for some of you. Okay, Luca, whenever you're ready. Okay, so we're going to start now. So good afternoon, everyone, or good evening, depending on your time zone. So I'm Luca, I'm 2022 YYGS alumni, and I'll be leading you through this presentation. So today we'll discuss YYGS specifics of YYGS residential, but also you will be able to hear some testimonials by alumni. And this presentation is done in collaboration with American Corner Banja Luka and Education oh, yeah, USA Bosnia and Herzegovina. So we just want to know that Education USA is supported by State Department and that you can find all the relevant and accurate information about studying in the US in their four centers in Bosnia, in Sarajevo, Mostar, Banja Luka and Tuzla. So first I will introduce to you everybody who will be presenting tonight. So first we have Elena Gonzalez Blanco. She's the director of YYGS. And after we have alumni. So uh, we, we will have three alumni who will present tonight. And those are, so myself, Maya and Camila. We are all YYGS 2022 alumni. So first I will give the podium to Elena so she can give you a short presentation about the program. Hello everyone and thank you so much Luca and Education USA for making this happen and welcome everyone. See here I am. Yay. <laughs> I mean this actually is a picture of a map that is in my office but right now I'm in the Vienna airport. Um, because here at YYGS, we are always uh, traveling the world, uh, finding our amazing global scholars. But um, I am going to go over a quick presentation. I hope everybody can see my screen that I'm sharing. Um, and I'm going to go over a quick presentation about what this uh, program is. First of all, I want to mention that we're very excited because for 2023, we are going back to campus after uh, summers 20, 21 and 22 were fully online because of the pandemic. Um, even last summer, some restrictions were lifted in some countries. We could not host the program on, on campus because not every uh, country could participate. So we just had to do it online. But we're very excited that for 2023, we are indeed back on campus. So what is YYGS, you might be wondering. So it is an academic summer enrichment for amazing students from all over the world. And each summer we're incredibly lucky to be one of the most diverse programs in the world with uh, around 150 countries um, joining us uh, for these two week interdisciplinary sessions at Yale. Um, these are our dates uh, for summer 2023. So depending on your um, school calendar, you might be able to uh, attend one or two or three of these sessions so that when you um, apply, you will let us know which sessions work for you. Um, and then we will place you in either session one, two or three. And then we have four academic tracks that you can see here in the colorful circles. Um, so if you like STEM, you might be interested in innovations in science and technology. If you like humanities, we have literature, philosophy, and culture. Um, if you like social sciences, we have politics, law, and economics, which is our oldest track. And if you uh, maybe like a little bit of everything, um, that is our cross-disciplinary track called Solving Global Challenges. Again, when you apply, you, you tell us which of these you're interested in. Some students might be interested in just one or two or three, um, and maybe you you will only attend if you get your favorite one or maybe you're open to any. So I encourage you to list as many as you might be interested in. Um, this is what we do during the, um, during the session. We're very uh, unique because we're very much based in peer-to-peer -peer interaction. So we're not a summer school. We're nothing like school. We're more like a conference of amazing students from all over the world. And our key components are lectures, um, seminars and family time, among other things. Um, first lectures, obviously we have Yale professors that are very excited to share their knowledge with you and um, 
if you are in say the science track we will pick lecturers from different uh, sciences so maybe you love physics but you will also get uh, some lectures in biology or computer science or other sciences and um, these are top professors like I say we're incredibly lucky um, like here you have some uh, examples of some professors that lecture for us um, last year we have uh, Dean Lewis who is the Dean of Yale College uh, so again really important people in Yale uh, uh, do enjoy lecturing our global scholars after each lecture, the students will um, get together in small groups of 10 or 12 students, and they will discuss the lecture they just uh, listened to. This is, and they will be uh, led by an um, instructor. Our instructors are Yale grad and undergrad students. Um, these um, breakout sessions are very special because you get to ask questions about what you understood, what you didn't understand you can say hey I have a question about this or hey I don't agree about something the professor said and that's when uh, the group kind of gets to digest the lecture and really learn a lot more from it um, one of the key components of why we yes are our seminars um, you will Elena, something happened. We don't hear you anymore. Yeah, no, I know, I know. Um, okay. So here are some examples okay. of seminars. Okay. There's just an announcement in the airport, so I don't want that, that to be in the way. So maybe, um, Luca, you can explain what your seminars, what seminars that you enjoyed. Um, so seminars are taught by Yale students. Um, grad and undergrad students and they're very passionate about these topics mm -hmm. and um, we have a blue book of seminars where you will pick uh, whatever seminars you're interested in sometimes the students pick them because they love this topic and they know a lot about it sometimes they pick it because they don't know much about it but they're interested in it but this group of students that are have a common interest is very special and makes the the seminars particularly interesting for the students. Um, then um, we have family time. Uh, we create families of students that are, um, again, groups of 10 or 12 students from um, all over the world. And they um, get together for fun activities, social activities, reflections, getting to know each other's cultures. We really take advantage of the fact that we have this unique, unique, unique uh, group of such diverse students that is very rare to find at any level of education. So that's why we create the families and these families stay connected for a long time. A lot of our alumni right now, we have more than 10,000 alumni and they tell me that they still get it, uh, are in touch with their family and they have become a support group for them. Um, this is our um, re uh, eligibility requirements for the program. Uh, you do have to be 16 um, uh, in order to participate, um, because if you're not 16 by the first day of the last session, then you can't come. You have to be able to follow our curriculum and learn in English, which you should be okay if you attend an international school. And if not, if your English is good enough, we don't have any written um assignments so if your spoken English is, is good you should be okay um, you should be a current high school sophomore or junior or whatever is the equivalent in your country and um, you are not eligible if you've already participated because we want to spread the gift of YYJS to as many students as possible um, the application is a little bit like a mini university application. Some of you might not be interested in university in the US, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it, it is kind of like a good practice for any kind of uh, university application. You will have to give us an activities list, um, write uh, a couple essays and a couple short answers, give us your school transcript and one recommender uh, that can uh, tell us a little bit about who you are. Um, and then we have an application fee that can be waived if you can't afford it. Uh, there's a way that you can uh, request that payment to be waived. 
And then um, that's pretty much it. Um, our tuition um, is $6,500 for the two week. That includes everything, room and board, food, your room, all the academics. Um, it's really an intense program because um, we are on session basically every day from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And um, yeah, so, but we do offer financial aid. We offer financial aid that like you see here, and that can cover up to 100% of what tuition costs. And uh, we're very proud to be um, basically the only pre-college academic enrichment program in the US that offers financial aid uh, equally to domestic and international students. That's why we're able to be uh, the most diverse program in the world. Uh, so finances shouldn't be a problem. If you apply and we admit you, we should be able to um, help you uh, to be able to attend. Um, however, like I said in the beginning, uh, we couldn't run for the last three years because of COVID. And we still are not sure of exactly what the COVID policies will be uh, by June. We're hoping things will be back to normal. But as we stand now, we do need uh, students to be uh, vaccinated um, for COVID. And then our um, if any uh, policies do change, we're still not sure if we'll have to require testing or not. That sort of thing is a little bit far away, but our policies, will keep being updated in, um, in, the, in our COVID website. Um, so our deadlines, even we're a summer program, our deadlines are um, coming up. So it's November 2nd for our early action um, and January 10th for our regular decision. This is very much like the US universities. Uh, and the reason why we do this and why our deadlines are, are so early is because we're a very complex program. We have a lot of applications that we have to uh, read. And also um, students need to know if they are attending or not early on so they can plan right for their uh, travel. Like I said, some of these students are coming from really, really far away and that takes time. And as we know, uh, flights can be more expensive if you wait longer to buy them. So this is why, if you, this is something that you're interested in, you should go into our website and apply as soon as possible um, because our deadlines are coming up really quickly. And um, our website really has a lot more information that um, uh, you should look into. We also have links to our YouTube channel and our Instagram where you can hear accounts from other alumni. And um, I think the most important um, thing of our program are our alums, our students. They really make it special. They're an amazing group of young, curious students from all over the world. And we're very lucky that we have some alumni here with us that are going to talk a little bit more about what what we yes, what we just meant for them. So um, here you, I'll stay around and uh, we will answer uh, questions at the end. But I think now uh, Luca is going to talk a little bit about his experience with us. Yeah, so thank you so much. That was very informative. So next we'll hear from alumni of the program. And the first one who will speak with us or to us is Maya. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Maya Anandan and I live in New Delhi, India. And I attend the American Embassy School here. Um, and YYGS was an incredible experience for me. Um, I was a part of the Solving Global Challenges session and it was just amazing. I think it was probably one of the best summers I've ever had. <laughs> um, and so just to sort of explain the seminars that I was a part of, I know that Alina uh, sort of went through some of them, um, but this summer I was a part of the, or I had signed up for the Permaculture Farming as a Social Justice Seminar. Uh, global Apartheid and Refuge Seminar, and then the Art of Scientific Research Seminar. All three of these seminars were incredible. I, I definitely recommend them if they're going to continue on this coming summer. Um, and I think my favorite one was definitely permaculture, the permaculture session, because I'm really passionate about agriculture and climate change and the intersection between the two. Um, so my advice to, to any of you who are thinking of applying uh, to YYGS and once you sort of, if you're accepted and, and are able to select the seminars that you'd like to, 
you know, take part in. Um, I would choose the ones uh, that you're, you know, that, that are obviously interesting to you, but also to go out of your comfort zone and choose something that you may not have necessarily chosen before, because it's your opportunity to learn something new. Um, I definitely learned a lot. I mean, the Global Apartheid and Refuge seminar, everything that the, the seminar instructor had explained to us, I had never learned about before. So it was an incredible experience for me. Um, and I also really loved my family time group. I know Elena explained a bit about family time. It's definitely one of my favorite parts of YYGS. You get to interact and, and get to know the other kids in your session. Um, my family time advisor was incredible. Her name was Allie. And I, I, we were able to become super close to her as well as the kids. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. And um, I think, you know, the program is incredible. There's so many different things that you get to learn about. They also have lectures that, that all the students have to listen into. And each lecture is very different, but they're all connected uh, in different ways and related to the sessions that you sign up for. Um, and it's a great experience to learn about Yale as a university um, and the different kinds of things and different kinds of opportunities that they have, uh, as well as the different kinds of things that they're they're focusing on um, as a university and within the different majors. Um, and, you know, I'm still really close friends with a lot of the people that, that were part of my session, as well as other sessions. Luca, I'm still in contact with. We were both um, in the same group for one of the projects that we had to do for YYGS. Um, and I think all around my favorite part of the entire program was the simulation competition that we had at the very end. Um, we basically had to develop a solution to a post-pandemic challenge. Um, and Luca and I, we worked together on a database, and we'll get into that a little later in this session um, and explain to you what we did. I'm not sure if they're gonna continue that next semester, uh, not next semester, excuse me, next summer. Um, but if they do, I hope they do because it was it was really amazing and, and very fun as well. There was no pressure. Um, it, was, it was a friendly competition and it was great to see what the other kids in, in all three of the sessions were doing. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm free to open or to ask any questions if, if anyone has any, although I think we're taking questions at the end, but I just wanna say that YYGS is incredible and I hope you all apply. Um, it's definitely experience you'll remember for the rest of your life, so yeah. Well, thank you so much, Maya. So the next person who will share their experience is actually me. So I was a participant last year in YYGS Online and I was in third session and my track was innovations in science and technology. So I liked basically all the components of the program. But for me personally, even though seminars were good, lectures were much better, even though there were many of us and we got to ask the questions in the end, the topics were very interesting and you could really learn a lot. So my favorite lecture was the lecture by Professor Nilay Hazari, who did who does his research actually in synthesis of formic acid from CO2, which is actually, which is chemistry. Yeah, inorganic chemistry. And it was very interesting because there was something that I might be inclined to do in the future. And so, yeah, but the other ones, we had ones about robotics and one about biology. Actually, there was about medicine. So yeah, whatever you're interested in, you're, you'll find something that will appeal to you. Um, so as for the seminars in the innovations in science and technology, there were, there were very, there were many very interesting ones. And they include, for example, I did a seminar about ethics of blood transfusions, which is not something that you will think first when you think about science and technology, but it, but it is actually related to medicine and very important topic. Besides those two components, Family time was so amazing. So my family time instructor was John Moa. He is a Brown actually alumni, but he's currently cooperating with YYGS. He was super nice and he was actually able to answer all of our questions, even though he might have not been well-versed in some of the topics, well, because they were not his concentration, but he was still able to answer all of the questions we had. And we also played games in, some family time sessions. So it was very fun and very interactive. Like Elena said, this is a very interactive program. You always get to ask questions and discuss and share your opinion. Nobody will 
tell you anything for sharing your opinion. It's actually looked at very positively if you share your opinion, even if it's different than what, for example, the instructor or other people might have. Yeah, like Maya said, we're going to now do a short overview just to show you what our simulation project was. So the simulations is part of YYGS where, like Maya said, we had to tackle a post-pandemic issue and every group does it with their own small project. So our project was a database that contains all the job opportunities for young people. Maya will now give a short introduction of what it is and I will share the website we created to actually support our idea. Yeah, so thank you, Luca. Um, so the post-pandemic challenge that we chose for this project was um, the issue of understaffing and um, you know the lack of jobs um, around the world. I think it was something that I'd witnessed myself as I was traveling um, before, before YYGS and even in India. Um, it's a huge issue. And it was something that we, you know, had obviously had to take a little bit of time to brainstorm and understand how we were going to go about solving it. Um, and obviously, our project doesn't solve it entirely, but um, we wanted to create sort of a, a model that could maybe be, you know, uh, used in the future. And so our database uh, is basically, we used Wix, which is a website creator um, application that you can use. And I would recommend everyone to use it even with school and other things, but we used Wix and um, our website or database was called uh, Jobster. That was our name. And our logo was a lobster, I think. Yep, it was a lobster. Um, and so basically we had around five students in our group. Each student was from a different session. I was from Solving Global Challenges. I think there was one other student that was from my session. Um, so this simulation project was also a great opportunity for us to get to know the other kids in different sessions because we weren't really interacting with them um, during our seminars and, and other things. Um, and so, yeah, here's the website. Um, we definitely worked hard on it. <laughs> uh, and so just to sort of explain our process, um, the five of us, we each went around the city that we were in. I was in Jersey City um, and, you know, we had some kids from, from Vietnam and from Shanghai, I think. Um, and each of us went around our, you know, cities and found five to 10 job openings. And we tried to have a very, a, a variety of jobs. So both gig economy and full-time jobs. And we gathered all the information about each of these jobs and wrote them down including, you know, hours, uh, job requirements, skill requirements, um, uh, wage, and, and, and things like that. Uh, so it was very detailed. And then we created a map uh, with the help, you know, Luca was able to create a map where you could basically tap on your city and you'd be able to find the job opportunities in that specific city. Um, it's not fully filled yet, obviously, since we were only five kids in our group, um, but it was definitely, it, it was definitely a great start to a project. Um, and we also developed a, bra a blog, excuse me, um, where we gave financial advice and advice about, you know, how to go about selecting the job and the right job for you. Um, so yeah, Luca, you can take it away with sort of yeah. going through the So here we can see the, so firstly, we can, this is not the map, but this is the brief overview with all the jobs that we have collected. You also have, when you click on it, you have description you have a description of what the wage is what working times and other very important information that you need if you want to apply for this particular job our main focus let's say was the map that we created so on this map you can see all the job opportunities that we've added the great thing about it is that you can also add your own job opportunities, which we will then verify and then they will appear on the map. So for example, let's, sir, let's choose this one opportunity in Jersey City. So here we can see that this is a position for a barista and cashier at Dunkin' Donuts. And below it, you can see all the relevant information again about the job opportunity and about the, the place and everything. So you can very easily find jobs that are in your vicinity and jobs that you see the best, not only by working time, but by salary and required qualifications. Okay, so after that, 
like Maya said, we also created a blog. So our blog uh, aims to introduce more people to financial terminology and to the things that are important to know in your life if you want to, you know, if you want to really be successful and if you want to be able to manage your finance as well. In our first post, we introduced YouTube channel Two Cents, which tackles important financial topics like savings, investing, and debt in a very easygoing and very interesting way. So you can learn and not be overwhelmed by all the information, which is very nice. Their channel has more than 40 million total views, and it is actually run by CBS Digital Studios. And the two presenters, which you can see here, are actually two certified financial advisors. So even though their advice is not really a, uh, not meant to be used as literal advice, and it has no, let, let's say, legal coverage, you can learn lots of interesting things, and you can always search more on the topics that you are interested in. And also, there's our About page, which describes the global challenge and actually the team. So I want to give a shout out to other members of our team. So me and Maya are here tonight, but also we had Cyan, Yuchen, and Zitai who were very helpful with creating this and obviously gave, gave huge contribution. And here you can also read our mission and our vision. I just want to say that Zitai created, custom created this logo and it is not some stock picture, but, and it was actually created specifically for this purpose. Yeah. So thank you so much for listening to us. I hope this project was interesting and, and that it shows how much you can do in just, the, just two weeks of the program with two people who you meet like then and there, with, two, with like five unknown people. I, I hope this really shows what, what can you do. And so the next person who will present is Camilla. Hi, Camilla. Hello, Luca and everybody else. Thank you very much for having me here. I am so, so happy and excited to share my experience with all of you. And I am certainly, certainly sure that each one of you has the potential and the motivation to apply because this summer program, it was very enriching and very resourceful in many ways. I'm also 2022 graduate of YYGS and I was with Luca, but we were in different sessions. So mine was a bit earlier in the beginning of the summer holidays and I was in innovations in science and technology, which was absolutely fascinating for me because uh, growing up with a, um, in a, well, I'm from Tajikistan and usually STEM is a very male dominated field where only where females have less opportunities and um, resources to expand and to learn from. I found that YYGS gave me and provided me with the platform to be open-minded and to become a more passionate learner and advance in the field of STEM without having any pushbacks and without telling myself that I'm not capable enough because I don't fit into this um, stereotypical mindset. So it was very eye-opening, an eye-opening opportunity that I would um, recommend for anyone. And it's absolutely amazing. Um, my favorite part of YYGS was the lectures and the shorter seminars where we learned about um, the process of aging and also robots, which was quite exciting, something that I've never done before. We had great lectures from Yale and from other places. And my um, family time instructor, he was actually a tragic person from my country and he's currently studying medicine in Yale and 
the fact that he's there and he's from the same country as I am gave me even more motivation and drive to excel in my studies and to study hard so I could potentially uh, consider applying to Yale. And I am sure that everybody here wants the same for themselves. And as long as you stay on track and as long as you're willing to put in the effort, I'm sure you'll do incredibly well. Um, I also think that the summer program was quite informative in many ways. They were very mindful when it came to class time and screen time because that could be difficult for some of us with the connection to the internet or maybe with accessing some certain tools that we're not capable of um, attaining in a certain territory or country. Everybody was very nice and understanding. And one thing I would recommend you, you guys to do is to always reach out and have a lot of questions because asking questions at the end of the day could really benefit you. And please don't be shy because those people are there to help you out along the way. As always, you could reach out to me maybe if we have the email addresses coming out or to anybody else here to um, ask us questions because that's such a, um, an amazing way to learn more about YYGS. And I guess YYGS was very, um, a, a very long journey because it was uh, not only educational, but in a way, we also talked with people from all different backgrounds and that come from international, very international cohorts, for sure. And not only did we um, study and learn, but we also became more open-minded, more accepting, and we valued each other even more because when you have people that come from all different parts of the world you tend to become more um, interested and even I guess in a sense very curious about what they did in the past and how they got to the place that they are right have an awesome time I would definitely, definitely encourage every one of you guys to apply. And it would be such, such a great opportunity for everybody to advance in their field of interest, especially because YYGS provides you with different resources and even help in the future after you graduate. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, Luca. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. So as you see, I have dropped the our emails in the chat. I will also drop the email of YYGS. So after this, I want to just briefly talk about the application process and how it works. So I know Elena mentioned this, but I think that for the most students here who really want to apply, this would be very helpful. So I'll try to be short and but also give you all the necessary information. So when you go to the website, when you go to the website, which is which will be dropped in chat just now, you will be able to create your account and start the application. At first, I know the application might seem very broad and very big, but when you start filling it out, it is not that scary, let's say. So don't get intimidated by the sheer size of application, because even though it seems pretty extensive, lots of things can be done very, I wouldn't say easily, but things aren't too difficult. Don't, don't be scared to try and don't be scared to just go in. Oh, as you see, sharing the, the website where you can find the application. So with this apply now button will let you access the application portal which looks like this and you can then log in and create an account. Okay, 
And so my advice for anybody who wants to apply would be to always be honest because YYGS wants diverse group of people. There's no set like profile that YYGS is looking for. You can be very different and you can have your own thoughts and, and get in. Even though it's very competitive, I think it's very important for you to always believe in yourself and never get discouraged. Also, if you have any questions about the application or writing essays, please ask me or ask any of the people whose emails I've dropped. So just important also detail. Elena mentioned that the application, that, that in the application, there is included section about financial aid. You can, let's say, win or get an opportunity to get up to 100%, so everything to be paid for you. Uh, keep in mind that you will need to submit some documents so they can verify your financial situation and write actually a small paragraph. At least that was like, at least that was what it was last year, explaining why do you need the aid. But also that's not very scary. And I personally got very generous financial aid. And so please, the grant for financial aid is very huge. So don't let the finances stir you away from the application. Yeah, and choose your people who will recommend you very carefully and choose your tracks. I wouldn't say very carefully because you have the opportunity to list your choices, but maybe try to not just be like, just think about what you think you like. Think deeper and think, think what would you really enjoy. The website is very helpful. Elena is showing it right now. It is very helpful to read about everything and to find what you truly like. Also, you can read testimonial, testimonials of other alumni on the website. So that would be it for the formal part of the presentation. Now you can ask any questions. Please feel free to drop a message in chat or unmute or however you feel comfortable, you can now ask questions and we'll, all of us will be here to answer them. I want to thank you, uh, the three of you, for your uh, words. That was great. Thank you so much. It's great to see um, that you connected. And I wanted to ask you if you're still in touch with your families. Um, you talked, uh, of course, a lot about your simulation, but I'm just curious if you're in, in touch with your families or with any anyone else that you met here in YYGS. Actually, um, my family time group we all have a an Instagram group chat and every now and then someone will send a message and we'll be able to, you know, can reconnect with one another. Um, I'm still in contact with a lot of the, of my peers who are in my family time. Um, and it's really nice because um, this summer I'm going back to the United States and I'll hopefully be able to meet some of them. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and yeah, so we're definitely still in touch. Yeah. For me, the situation is pretty much the same. We have formed an Instagram group after the session has ended. And like, yeah, like Maya said, every now and then somebody will drop a message and then we'll all, you know, communicate and write a little bit. And yeah, that's how it works. But I think that you pretty much stay in contact for, you stay connected. Even though you're not communicating all the time, you stay connected and you will always have people who you can talk to or maybe ask if you need something. So yeah, it's a very friendly community that you form. The same goes for me too. Something that was very fun at the end of our family gathering, when it came to the last part of YYGS, we made the yearbook, our, um, advisor suggested that we make a yearbook and each of us comments something nice underneath the name of the person and it was a very sweet kind of way to say goodbye but we are still in touch on social media and other platforms it's a i guess a lifelong friendship bond Great, thank you. I don't know if anyone else has any questions. You can make you can go ahead and unmute if you want to speak the question, or you can also just write it on the chat. Yeah, 
yeah, I see the question. And the question is, what was your favorite part? So my personally, my favorite component were lectures and they were very good because they are taught by really ill professors who are, let's say, very respected people in their fields. My favorite part, I would say, was the simulation. And the problem that we were solving was Asian hate in the US, particularly um, towards Asian Americans. And then at the end of our simulation, we were supposed to come with a few solutions. And each one of us had our own approach to finding a solution, for instance, raising awareness in our local communities or in our schools, or maybe supporting an organization that um, so encourages uh, Asian um, to be more kind and more supportive towards um, people who are who come from um, indigenous backgrounds or um, smaller communities and I think it was very incredibly incredibly nice yeah I have to agree with uh Camilla my favorite um part of YYGS this summer was um the simulation um I think it was a great opportunity for students or YYGS students to get to know the other people in different sessions because I hadn't really interacted with anyone from the other ones, only the students that were in solving global challenges. Um, and it was also a great opportunity to work on a project that you may not have necessarily worked on, you know, on your own time. And so it, it I wouldn't say it forced you to think about, you know, solutions to post pandemic challenges, but I think that was a necessary thing for, it's something that everyone should be thinking about. How can we solve some of these challenges? Because the pandemic has had a, you know, a, a grave impact on our society. Um, and there are lots of things that we have to, to tackle now. Um, and so it was a great, great opportunity. And I also really loved my family time group and the seminars. I don't think I have one favorite part. I think everything was just great. So, yeah. It's okay if you guys don't have any more questions. We went through a lot of information. You also have the website that, like Lucas said, is very, very useful. And you also have um, our alumni emails that were really kind to share the emails with you. So if you have any direct questions for them, that's also a great resource. And of course, you can always contact us um, in our YYGS email. I just, uh, I'm really excited uh, that you guys are here and hopefully you will uh, go into the website and apply and uh, become part of our YYGS family. We have over 10,000 alumni all over the world and our alums end up in all the best universities all over. And it's really cool that they, wherever they go, they will have YYGS friends. Um, so that's very powerful. I will say some of our students uh, are not interested in attending university in the U.S. at all. Uh, they know they're going to go back to their home countries or other countries, but some um, absolutely want to have a taste of what American university would be like. So whatever your situation is, um, uh, we're a very inclusive program, and we have, like I said, uh, students in all of those situations. So if we don't have any more uh, questions, look, I think, um, I know it's late in some of the uh, countries uh, or students might be joining from. And I also know um, a lot of you are Ivy students that have a lot of homework. <laughs> so I want to be mindful of your time. Um, so um, yeah, I think we have. Uh, yes, one more question. Yeah, one more question. Yeah. Well, maybe I would like to answer this. Well, at least I would like to answer. Uh, give you my opinion on this question. I think that early applications don't significantly significantly impact your chances, but I think that you should apply when you feel most comfortable applying. And when you feel that your application is the strongest, you shouldn't just rush your application to get it to fit the early deadline. The yeah. admissions yeah. people judge you, not the time when you submit your application. Yeah, that is completely true, Luca. Um... 
Uh, however, I do know that early application, the early action application helps the students that are coming from very far away so they know earlier, because right, it's a difference between knowing in December or knowing in March. And uh, some students really need to know uh, if they're accepted and what session they're coming to to plan the rest of their summer. So I would say if you need, if you're in the, that category, uh, do take advantage of the early application. I know with visas and uh, travel expenses and things like that, uh, some of our international applicants are, are trying to apply early. But like Luca said, it's not like you can, it's not going to hurt you if you don't apply early. It's more, it's mostly for your convenience. Yeah. Yes, so we'll wait one more minute if there are any more questions. If not, then we can end the session. So yeah, once again, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute. You do not have to drop them in the chat. But also if you want to, you can. Okay, I think we're good. I think uh, you you guys can, like, can reach out to the emails that we provided and get the rest of the information in the website. There are also other webinars online that you can watch about specific topics, about the specific academic tracks, about financial aid. So I also recommend those if you, if you have other questions. And again, thank you so much to our wonderful alumni and to Education USA for your support. And uh, they're going to be posting this session uh, in social media so other students can access it as well. And tell your friends, uh, uh, we're always trying to spread the word in all corners of the world that might have not heard about us. So thank you everyone and have a great rest of your day. Yes, thank you again so much. I hope that you have learned a lot and hopefully some of you will apply and probably attend. So, because you never know, even though it's pretty competitive, there's, you know, there's always a chance, uh, probably like high chance that it might be just you who gets in. So yeah, please don't ever re refrain yourself from applying, just apply and see. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.